hello and welcome again today we will be discussing on page 127 that the usml step 1 2021 microbiology um, that is lecture 5 and today we will discuss the important point and important high yield questions actually so <clears throat> we're talking about that we are talking we will be talking about the intracellular bugs and these are uh, I there are some formulas to remember those bugs because you know this bug and drugs needs to remember so we need to remember this carefully okay then there is the uh, talking we'll talk about the encapsulated bacteria and then uh, vaccine made for the encapsulated bacteria okay and we also talk about the sequential vaccine of the pneumococcal vaccine you know a pneumococcal pneumonia is most common cause of the community acquired pneumonia and for that what are the vaccination options for all the for uh, like um, children and then comes to infant and then then uh, old age and if you are going to have a transplant patient or something like that then what are the options do you have okay let's uh, <clears throat> move on so we are talking about the intracellular bug intracellular bug can be two type obligate intracellular and facultative intracellular let me explain about the obligate intracellular obligate intracellular means these are the organism that will remain inside the cell completely they can't survive outside the cell this is the obligate intracellular obligate inside the cell there is no option that they can be found outside so this is the rickettsia chlamydia and coxiella so they cannot survive outside the cell so they rely on the host atp so this totally depend upon the host cell atp and they remain inside and their name are the rickettsia chlamydia and coxiella how can we remember remember as a there is a formula in your uh, first aid as well stay inside when it is really chilly and cold so it is really chill and cold if you are finding very cold then you should stay inside this is just a formula to remember it so rickettsia really chill chlamydia and cold is coxiella so these are the obligate intracellular parasite at least you should remember rickettsia chlamydia although there will be the cox question of coxilla as well so you should remember these are the obligate intracellular parasite bacteria okay now coming to the facultative intracellular facultative is and means optional it can be inside it can be outside so those organisms that can live inside then in the process of their pathogenesis sometimes they can enter inside the cell some can, can they can be found outside so they have the facultative they have the option they can be found inside the cell as well they can found outside the cell as well they can live inside the cell also and they can come out as well so these are facultative intracellular but obligate intracellular they cannot come outside the cell if they come out they will not survive that is the point so facultative intracellular what are the organism the name are the salmonella salmonella type you have seen a nigeria then nigeria meningitis can be brucella mycobacterium tuberculosis listeria francisella legionella and yersinia pestis if you closely observe this organism these are the major medically important organism salmonella you have seen that in southeast and asia and other african countries endemic region typhoid is the most is the most common diseases waterborne diseases then this nigeria meningitis or nigeria gonorrhea these are all are causing uh, mainly meningitis or causing what Menin meningitis and then there will be brucella brucellosis it is common in the endemic region then mycobacterium tuberculosis all over the world you can find tb listeria is one of the now um, in uh, immunocompromised patient they are responsible for the uh, meningitis okay so francisella legionella cause for the pneumonia yersinia pestis responsible for the uh, diseases so these all are the medically important organism and they are facultative intracellular means they can found inside and they can enter inside the cell what faculty intracellular made them uh, what is the advantage for them they can enter into the cell and prevent them from the phagocytosis obligate intracellular they cannot be killed by the phagocytosis because they will remain inside the cell and we have to kill the cell for killing the bacteria in the obligate in the faculty what happened they have the option they will go outside they will cause the disease to prevent their uh, phagocytosis or to increase their pathogenicity they can live inside the cell so at that time our own immune system our antibody dependent immune system will not be able to kill or fight this disease so because of that these diseases are common and we get disease disease frequently because our immune system doesn't able to er eradicate this organism because of their facultative intracellular region, nature so let's talk uh, how can we remember this organism there is a formula come some nasty box may live facultatively so some for salmonella s for salmonella and nasty n for nigeria b for brucella m for mycobacterium tuberculosis l for live that is listeria and facultatively you can find f for francisella l for legionella and y for yersinia pestis so this is very actually important you should remember the formula because you cannot remember uh, in the if you 
process into the formula then you can remember this organism otherwise it will be difficult to remember all so remember some nasty box mainly facultatively some for yes for the salmonella and for nigeria b for brucella m for mycobacterium tuberculosis l for listeria f for fat francisella l for legionella and y for worse yes in a pestis so these are the organism they can be live facultatively intracellularly so that's in this way we can remember okay now coming to the encapsulated bacteria encapsulated means the capsule we have talked about the capsule capsule prevent phagocytosis then this is also a virulence factor of the bacteria the capsulated bacteria has a more chance for to infect us they have this is the pathogen they prevent uh, phagocytosis so this bacteria have some virulence this capsule act as a virulence factor for them what are the organism streptococcus pneumoniae group b streptococci which is known as streptococcus agalexi then salmonella klebsiella pneumoniae hemophilus influenzae type b pseudomonas aeruginosa nigeria meningitis and e coli these all are the bacteria that is having the capsule have capsule and we have already discussed in the first lecture that all bacteria have the capsule made of the polysaccharide except one that is a bacillus anthracis and that is made of the polydeglutamate so you have to understand this all this bacterial capsule is polysaccharide in nature so this polysaccharide in nature now we'll come over that so this all how to remember this encapsulated bacteria there is a one formula like some killer have pretty nice extra capsule so some killer it is easy to remember this rhyme some killer have pretty nice extra capsule so we indicates that we are talking about the capsulate here also some nasty box mainly facultative means we are talking about the facultative intracellular organism so in this way you can remember so encapsulated bacteria how can i remember from this formula like s4 Streptococcus pneumoniae, group B streptococci and salmonella. So three S. Streptococcus pneumoniae, group B streptococci and salmonella. This come from the S. K for Klebsiella pneumoniae, H for Amphalus influenzae type B, P for Pseudomonas aeruginosa, N for Nigeria meningitis and E for E. coli. So Streptococcus pneumoniae, group B streptococci, salmonella, Klebsiella, Amphalus influenzae type B, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Nigeria and E. coli have the capsulated organism. So you can remember with this rhyme all these organism are optionized and clear by the spin spleen so this all capsulated organism are usually optionized and clear by the spleen if the person doesn't have spleen then there will be this decrease in optionization as e splenia there is no spleen here decrease optionization and increase the risk of severe infection so need to vaccinate it against them so if there is some patient have a uh, splenectomy they need to get vaccinated previously with this uh, capsulated organism because those capsulated organism cannot be now clear since the he or she doesn't have a spleen and they will cause a repeated infection and serious infection and patient will die so if you are going to splenectomy if you are going to remove the spleen in any patient like a thalassemia or something any reason there is a splenomegaly and you have to remember remove it then in that situation you need to vaccinate these people with nigeria meningitis streptococcus pneumoniae and hemophilus influenzae so is this three capsulated mainly three although if they available this all capsulated organisms need to be the some killer have pretty nice capsule need to be vaccinated but the measure that need to be vaccinated is nigeria meningitis streptococcus pneumonia and hemophilus influenzae how can remember these three organism a spleen means no spleen here and for nigeria meningitis s for streptococcus pneumonia and s for hemophilus influenzae so on the basis of this we can actually uh, know that a splenic patient need to be vaccinated why do this need to be vaccinated because they cannot be optionized if there is no spleen and they can cause the severe infection in to you lead to your death now we are talking about the capsular polysaccharide look capsular polysaccharide is a component of any bacteria having capsule except this bacillus anthracis which is made of the polydeglutamate so we are talking about all capsulated organism is made of polysaccharide plus they are conjugated with the protein serves as antigen in the vaccine the important point is polysaccharide you have if you are goes down then you can see protein nature have a t cell response if you had if you can know your immune system we'll talk in the immunology class i'll take the detailed class of immunology then where we will know that protein nature the component which has protein nature will produce will goes to the t cell response that is mhc2 uh, and then goes to the helper t cell and they'll produce the uh, antibody and from there the antibody will produce help the memory cell so all the component any component that enter inserts are any bacteria virus fungi if there is protein in nature they will go to the t cell and t cell response will be there and there will be production of the uh, immunity and that will have the memory cell but any component that is lipid and polysaccharide in nature they will actually go to the b cell response and there will be no memory cell so all thing all any nature of the thing that may be bacteria virus anything that in, if it is a protein nature they will help in the t cell response and they will develop memory cell but if it is a lipid and polysaccharide content then they will not develop the memory cell so 
protein nature if it is since is like polysaccharide polysaccharide is, is the carbohydrate and lipid they will not do they will actually directly go to the b cell and since they go to the b cell there will be no memory so in few of day of time that memory will be disappear there will no immunity against this lipid and polysaccharide component so what we do we cannot give this polysaccharide component only to have the protection because it will be a very short period of time so we conjugate this polysaccharide uh, with the protein and then we give in the vaccine so what happened now polysaccharide is also but the protein nature has been attached now if the protein protein has been conjugated now this becomes a protein compound now if it goes inside the cell cell our body will take as a protein thing and then will it will goes to the t cell and t cell will response will be occur and there will be the memory cell formation and the immunity will last for long so this is the mechanism of conjugating the vaccine all conjugated vaccine like you have seen about this meningococcal this is a conjugated vaccine hemophilus influenzae type b this is a conjugated vaccine pneumococcal this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine name pcv13 this is a pneumococcal conjugate vaccine these all are three are the conjugate vaccine that you have to remember capsule are polysaccharides so they will not give the t-cell response and need to be conjugated with the protein for t-cell activation and class switching so they need to be conjugated so this meningococcal is a conjugate vaccine hemophilus influenzae type b is a conjugate vaccine pneumococcal 13 pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 is a conjugate vaccine whereas there is another vaccine called pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine 23 are not conjugate vaccine so what is the difference between pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 and pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine 23 there is actually a difference look this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine has a what protein nature so they they have only 13 serotypes but looking at this pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine they have 23 serotypes so you will say that okay uh, it is always better to give the 23 uh, serotype vaccination that will not necessary at all because we have to understand that this pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine although it will cover 23 serotypes circulating in the environment then this pcv 13 only because it will con contain only 13 serotypes but the difference is that this will cause the long lasting memory and memory cell will form there will be the long Im immunity but this will provide the short immunity what is the plan is that this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 is usually given to the children why it is given to the children because it will although it will cover only 13 serotypes but the important fact is that they will going to be from the memory cell and another mechanism that the by the baby or children or infant they are just born they will get the chance in their life to make the immunity to get the uh, intact with this uh, other poly sero serotype of this pneumococcal streptococcus pneumonia and, and because in the course of their life since they will get chance to get uh, exposed to this wire this uh, strain then we allow them to develop their own natural immunity so it's always better just you remember one thing one thing that pcv this is the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 and since it is a conjugate vaccine we need to vaccinate only this is can be given only to the children that you have to understand if you are giving this to the uh, then this although this uh, polysaccharide vaccine can be given to children no we usually doesn't give this pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine to the children we give only this pneumococcal conjugate vaccine there are the four dose for the infant two month four month six month and 12 month within the 15 months of the period of time this is usually and with the age we change it actually in infant it is given in the us cdc recommended four doses okay so that you have to remember but this uh, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine 23rd which is contained 23 uh, serotypes that is usually given to the adult people mainly the age 65 you can say okay so that is important now there is an important point of that some of the people will be splenic tommy or other condition will approve in that situation what are the options in that situation you can do what you can give this polysaccharide vaccine to the adult one suppose uh, any adult is there and what you are going to do you are you have to give this polysaccharide vaccine because the he or she elderly will get the chance if they are not vaccinated at all you give this polysaccharide pneumococcal polysaccharide 23 vaccine and then after at the age of 65 you give the next dose and the, between the first and second dose there should be a five five years interval so if there is a, some splenectomy chance and if it is, it is the adult one then what can you can do you can give this one dose of pneumococcal conjugate vaccine 13 then you can give this after one year this uh, polysaccharide pneumo, poly, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine and one inter one year interval and then you can give this again polysaccharide and pneumococcal vaccine at the age of 65 
so that is your interval or at the interval of five years that you have to know so this actually in the knee not cell we have to understand that sequential vaccine is usually given but pneumococcal vaccine is given to the children this is given to the adult one if you have give to this vaccine uh, to the splen uh, splenectomic patient then you can give this and then after one year uh, you have to give this either you give this first and then after one year this you give this 13 and at the five year interval you can give this again or you can give at the age of 65 in this way we can do the pneumococcal vaccination thank you